Hello, ladies and gentlemen. We are currently sitting in a 2023 Toyota Corolla with Toyota Safety Sense 3.0. And what I am going to do today is I'm going to teach you how to use the dynamic radar cruise control and the lane tracing on this vehicle. Now, I have previously made a video showing how to use Toyota's dynamic radar cruise control, but that was on a slightly older version of the Toyota Safety Sense, and the controls are a bit different on this one. So to tell which one you have, if you have a button somewhere in here that says set, S-E-T, then you have a different version from this car. I will put a link to the other video that I made in the description so you can check that out. But if your buttons look like this, stay with me because I'm going to teach you how to use the dynamic radar cruise control and the lane tracing assist in this vehicle. So the first thing we want to do is check our mode. If I push this button that says mode, it tells me up here adaptive cruise mode or cruise control mode. So the cruise control is just the standard cruise where you set it to 70 and it goes 70 until you hit something. And I wanna have it set to adaptive cruise control because that's what we're talking about today. That's the one where it'll see the car in front of us, uh, recognize them, slow down, bring itself to a complete stop if it needs to, pace the vehicle in front of us. That's what we're talking about today. So once we make sure that we are in the right mode for the adaptive cruise, the dynamic cruise, whatever Toyota calls it, they have two different names, whether or not you're looking at the uh, screen in the car, then all we need to do on this Toyota Safety Sense 3.0 version is get it out on the road and push that button to activate the system. At that point, we can adjust our speed by pressing plus to increase the set speed or minus to decrease the set speed. And we can use this button right here with the little car with the uh, kind of radar beams coming out of the back of it. That will adjust the following distance from the car in front of us. And then this turns the lane tracing assist system on and off. So that's your control for the lane tracing. If you hit cancel, you cancel out your speed or you can just hit the brake either way. And then RES is resume to resume cruising. So with all that being said, let's get this beauty out on the road and I will demonstrate how it works. All right, so we are out on the road. We have the mode set to the adaptive cruise mode and we are gonna push this magic little button that turns the whole shooting match on and we now have a message that says adaptive cruise mode active pay attention now the vehicle in front of us is coming to a stop and we can see from the little white icon of the car that we are locked on to the vehicle in front of us and our Toyota is bringing itself to a complete stop I did not put my foot on the brake to do that we are now sitting at the red light waiting for traffic to start moving again and you can see right there, it just says 40 miles per hour waiting. So that's the basic operation of the system. Now traffic starts moving again. I'm gonna push this button RES on the steering wheel and that will resume the cruise. So now we are accelerating. And the speed that I'm currently set to is 40 miles per hour. So the way the system works, I'm locked onto this car in front of me but if he drives off and leaves me uh, and goes faster than 40 miles an hour, my car will just do 40 until we catch up to another car. Now, a couple of words of kind of wisdom and warning about these systems. It's not designed to bring itself to a complete stop if you're driving at dead stopped traffic, right? So let's say you're on the highway, you've got it set to 65, and you're cruising along and all of a sudden traffic is stopped up ahead something happened there's a stoplight there was an accident something and you just kind of let the car go that's not what you want to do potentially it might bring itself to a complete stop but it also might not so in that situation just hit the brakes for example i am coming up to the stop here although it has locked onto the car in front of me and it's slowing itself down. So it did see that car pretty far out. But again, I was only doing 40. So in that case, it was safe, but just always pay attention. This is not a self-driving system. This is not autopilot. This is not Elon Musk telling you that you can take a nap behind the wheel, right? This is a driver assistance system. So you need to have your hand on the steering wheel. You need to be watching the road. You need to be ready to intervene if something happens. 
what is something that could happen? Well, let's say a car cuts you off really close from the side. The system mainly looks forward, but it doesn't have the best peripheral vision. So if somebody's very close getting in front of you, just go ahead and hit the brake, take control of it. Now, in this scenario, the car started moving forward. What I did that time was just tap the gas pedal barely, and now I have my foot off of the gas, and the Toyota is accelerating. I always film these how-to videos on surface streets because traffic comes to a stop much more reliably so I can demonstrate how the system works better. But I do have uh, similar systems in my own vehicles and I typically only use them on the freeway. I'm gonna push resume to get moving again. I typically use them on the freeway, especially in stop and go traffic. A system like this that does the full speed dynamic radar cruise control and can bring the vehicle to a complete stop is a godsend in heavy traffic on the Southern California freeways that I spend a lot of time on. So that's where I find the system to be most useful. Um, but I just kind of film these how-to videos on surface streets because it's easier to do it in this environment. Now, as far as the lane tracing goes, the lane tracing is currently on and it's active. So you can see the green lines um, in between like you know, that the, the, the steering wheel is in between with the green steering wheel. So what that means is that the car's camera can read the lane lines and if we were on a curve in the road, it would uh, assist the steering to keep me centered in the lane. Again, I'm on a straight road here, so it's not really gonna do anything for me, but if I was, if I kinda try to drift out of my lane, I can feel it pushing back in, uh, trying to keep me centered in my lane, which is a nice feature. Again, it's a driver assist feature. If you take your hands off of the steering wheel, the system will beep at you to tell you to put your hands on the wheel. And again, if you wanna disable or enable the lane tracing, it's that little button right there with the car in between the lane lines. So we're just kind of cruising along at this point. I, if I really want to keep up with traffic all the time, I often have to set my speed to be above the speed limit. So I'm going to push this plus button a few times and increase my set speed is now at 47 miles per hour. And if any law enforcement officers are watching this, I am only doing that to keep up with the prevailing speed of traffic and not uh, be a hindrance to, what do they call that? Impeding traffic. I don't want to get a ticket for impeding traffic, officer. So, I am going to change lanes right quick. Aha! So what just happened, when I changed lanes, the car saw nothing in front of it briefly, so it hit the gas, and then it saw a car in front of it, so it started beeping at me to tell me to hit the brakes. I was prepared to do that, but it compensated for it on its own, and now it is bringing me to a complete stop at this stoplight right here. Um, so another thing to look out for when you're using this system is what type of vehicle am I following? Is it a normal shaped vehicle? I'm behind another Corolla right now. Uh, it will have no trouble following that car. But the example I always use is a flatbed truck with nothing in it. So if that's the car that you are behind, how is your car reading it? And you kind of have to pay attention to be like, oh, okay, you know, it's too close. It shouldn't be this close. Let me just hit the brakes and take control of the system myself right now and just drive on my own or try to get, uh, you know, behind a more normal shaped car. The other thing that always makes me a little nervous and different cars say different things about it in the owner's manual and I've had kind of different results on the road, but motorcyclists. I don't like following motorcyclists when I'm using any sort of dynamic radar cruise control, adaptive cruise control, anything like that. I'm going to push resume and we will start driving again because it's just a smaller target and if the car makes a mistake and you hit somebody on a motorcycle, that is a much bigger problem than if you rear end somebody in a flatbed work truck. So, you know, you never wanna be in an accident in any scenario with any other vehicle, but you especially don't wanna hit a motorcyclist just because there's so much more likelihood of them becoming seriously injured. So I, whenever I'm using one of these systems, I avoid following motorcycles. I take control of the vehicle myself and do it that way. And I highly recommend that you do it the same way. Um, 
Right now, I have my following distance set to the shortest following distance. I'm gonna increase that a little bit, so now it's set to the longest one. And we're kind of slowing down, so it's not gonna be so noticeable right now. But um, when you set it to the longer following distances, it does leave a longer distance between you and the car in front of you. But remember, this is dynamic radar cruise control. So one of the things about the dynamic part of it is that the distance changes based on your speed, right? If you're going 70 miles per hour, it's gonna leave a lot longer distance than if you're going 20 miles per hour. So um, I'm gonna tap the gas, and now the car is accelerating on its own. My foot is no longer on the gas pedal. So, but you can see already, because I'm only doing like 29 miles per hour right now, and you can see it is leaving a longer distance between me and the car in front of me. Um, when I am using the system on the freeway in medium to heavy traffic, I always use the shortest following distance. And the reason for that is if you use one of the longer ones, you're leaving enough room for the person to cut you off. And like this guy's doing right now, he's not cutting me off, he's just changing lanes. You leave enough room for people to get in front of you. And so what happens is, let's say it's heavy traffic, uh, the person gets in the lane, and now the car recognizes a new target and it tries to back off. And then that keeps happening, you're gonna end up going in reverse on the freeway. So on the freeways, I always use the shortest possible following distance. You know, if you're out on a, on a drive with less traffic, light traffic conditions, then it's cool. I, I'll lengthen it out a little bit and give the guy in front of me a little bit more breathing room. But you can see right now we're doing like 42 miles per hour. And you can see how far it's leaving between us and the car in front of us. So um, that's the way that part of the system works. And again, that's this button right here to adjust that. And if we want to lower our set speed, we hit the minus. And that's pretty much how the dynamic radar cruise control in a Toyota with Toyota Safety Sense 3.0 works. Um, it's a fantastic system. I know that for people who've never used such a system, it's probably kind of scary at first, especially like right now, the car's bringing itself to a complete stop and I'm sitting here with a digital camcorder in my hand talking and totally cool with it because I'm used to it, and I've driven a million cars with this system. Um, you're gonna be freaking out the first time it does that. I'm just gonna be up front there. But uh, you paid for it. It's a feature that the car has. If you think you wanna try it, I highly recommend it. That's why I make these videos to kind of show people how it works. Um, I'm just gonna push my resume button on my steering wheel to get going again. So I encourage you to try it out. Um, I hope that uh, you enjoy it. If you have any questions, leave me a question in the uh, comments and I will do my best to answer it for you. And um, you know, the first couple of times, just hover your foot over the brake <laughs> and you'll get used to it and it's cool, but you know, just keep an eye on it. You're still driving the car. The car's just kind of helping you out with it. So that's the way the system works. And anyway, that is my, uh, my review and my how-to video on how to use the Toyota Dynamic Radar Cruise Control. I'm going to just kind of hit the brake here because I'm coming up to stop traffic. I hope you enjoyed it. <clears throat> Please like the video, subscribe to my channel, leave me a comment if you have any questions, and uh, always drive safely. Bye-bye.